like it or not, with Benjamin <laughs> Dixon, starts now. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, and welcome to. I saw Ben. And welcome to Like It or Not, where we're fitting to the two. And not oh, care who welcome to Like, like it. it or Not. Well, oh, I, just, I just want to say I saw Ben. That's all. But welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth. <laughs> and not care, not care who doesn't like it. Ain't it like seeing like a mythical figure or something that come to him? Like, you would have thought that man never existed if we ain't seen him today. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm not fooling with you today. <laughs> but good morning, everybody. How are you guys? I hope that you guys are doing really well. Thanks to uh, John Nichols for uh, coming on to the show. I know Anoa held it down this morning, so shout out to Anoa and Georgia. But, um, you know, before we get started, I see you trying to come to Jamaica with me with your top. Is. <laughs> Wait a you minute. Know? You and didn't and tell me that you were going to Jamaica. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm going to Jamaica. That's why I got these dreads. I'm going to Jamaica. I gotta get. I told you I'm gonna be naked on the streets. Okay. Come on, Stella. <laughs> you better go get this groove back, girl. I'm not mad I'm at going it. To, Take me why do, but why I gotta be Stella? Cause I'm turning 32. I mean, that just the only person I know who got her groove back. Ain't nobody else go get their. Oh, groove so back. I'm so trying to get my groove back. How you know my groove? How, that's so you saying I'm trying to get my groove back? How you know? Girl, I that groove, big, groove girl, back. that groove, that groove, big old. You know you're going to get your groove back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Baby, I'll be sleep by 7.30. And I got I'll be sleep by 7.30 and I don't end work until 11. So, now, see, <laughs> David called me yesterday, baby. I was trying to log a call and go to sleep at the same time. <laughs> My manager had a meeting with me and he was like, I'm going to just give you 15 minutes back. You sound really exhausted. Yes, I am tired. You think? I, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I just need to close my eyes. He gave. He said, "Just go ahead and close your eyes for a second. Just go ahead and do that." I was tired. I, I was exhausted. That was nice of him. Giving you. I know right. That was I was about to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. He called me to let me know that I could possibly be <laughs> in trouble, but I'm gonna give you 15 minutes back because you sound tired. <laughs> so yeah, it, it it was it was it was I was tired yesterday, man. And it wasn't even because yeah. of my hair. You know how when you be like, you gonna call off and then show up a braids the next day? It wasn't even because of my hair. My hair only was two hours. I thought it was gonna be like six hours, so I was ready to just go to bed on the girl, whatever. No, she, she's a young little thing that did my hair in two hours. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So she got, got to it just... No, she did. I... She, it was like, so tell it me. Looks I, good. You know, Thank you so much. And it's all the way past, and you guys know I'm tall, so it's all the way past my butt. I used to get my hair done. Yeah, I used to get my hair done like this. No, they're not heavy at all. Not heavy at all. Um, I used to get my hair done like this, you know, back in college days, so it's making me feel like a little college thing. Not with the dreads, but with the braids, all the way past my butt. Then I started getting neck problems, so I had to do it, but, you know, <laughs> me <and> back. <laughs> me <and> back. <laughs> so the girl, um, you know, the girl, the young girls have found a way to make it lightweight. So... I, I went to her, and um, I'm sorry to my original hairstylist. Girl, I could not drive over one hour to you and sit in the chair for 10 hours. She I'm sorry, uh, sis. Yeah, your, your, your other hairdresser, I'm like, this bitch cheated on I me. I did. <laughs> we go through it I the did. same thing with barbers. You know, my other barber, I, I didn't tell him I moved on to somebody else. Because uh, one thing is closer, and it's like, yeah, I'm just like, I don't, I'm sorry. It's, it's 15 sorry minutes away as opposed to one hour. Uh, the yes. gas, <laughs> the, the, the time that I'm sitting in your home, I'm there in the morning. I'm not leaving till night. This one allowed me to work, be back to work, do the show yesterday, get in my meeting for work, go get my hair done, come back and continue work. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I said, girl, I'm going to keep you. She, she a little 21-year-old thing. She was like, yeah, you know, uh, my mom, she, she, every time she kept telling me about an artist, right? She was like, I love this particular song by, um, you know, Summer Walker. I said, yeah, Summer Walker's first album was good. She's like, you don't like her new one? I was like, you know, it's okay. It's, it's not lyrical. Um, but I really love Jasmine Sullivan. My mom loves Jasmine Sullivan. <laughs> So then she, she continued. She's like, she's like, oh, you know, I really, really like, um, you know, um, 
it's this new artist. It's a male artist, and I forget his name. But she's like, I really, really like him. Lucky He's really day. cool. Not Lucky Day, because Lucky Day's 36. A lot of old okay. heads. And I can't say old heads. A lot of people know Lucky Day from before because he had a, a previous name, as, and he was a previous artist. And then he, he went through a brand change. Like a, he went through, like, he changed his whole brand up and came back out, Ooh. right? Ooh, shut so up. Are you for real? Yeah, I'm dead serious. And because um, I remember some of his old songs too, but I didn't know he was 36. But uh, I was saying, you know, I, I really like this. She was saying, I like this particular artist and it was a, 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 it's a guy, I forgot his name. So I said, oh, you know, he's cool, but I don't really rock with that too much. But you know who I really do like? I really like Lucky Day. Yeah, my dad loves Lucky Day. <laughs> She's just making us look all bad, girl. What is going on? I said, you know, I'm 31 right now. I'll be 32 in just a few days. You're 21. She's like, wow. <laughs> it was just getting crazy. It was getting crazy in there. I was like, Rebecca, just wait until you hit 40, child. You're going to get it all over the place. <laughs> She was like, you look really, really good. But I saw there was like, you know, when you walked in here, you were looking around. I said, because this is student housing. And I don't. Like, she was like, it's apartments, oh, but I'm campus. like, it's, I wasn't on campus. You know, they had their student housing across the way. It's still considered campus, but it's like across the way. And it's like beautiful apartments, but walking in there, it's just doors and doors and corridors and doors and doors and doors and more doors. And I'm just like, oh, then I walked into her place. Sorry if you're watching, young lady, but um, I walked into her place. <laughs> there is no real furniture. There are four doors. One here, one here. You know how it was, the four beds and yeah. four bathrooms. Oh, I was like, baby. She's like, I'm just looking for an apartment to just live on my own. I said, baby, um, I don't want to push you out if you can't financially do it. She's like, no, I can. My parents and my grandmother pay for most of my rent. I don't got to pay for anything. They bought me a brand new car. Um, so I'm just, there is no responsibility for these new college kids. I'm just going to say that and put it there. I said, girl, so what? Where's the money going? Like, you know, you're doing this hair, you know, whatever. She's like, I just saved that up. Get you your place, girl. No. Go get a place now. Well, at least, she, at least she's saving it and not uh, spending she's saving it, it, you know. She said, her man, is, she said her man is spending on her. But I just say that to say, um, they're trying to make me old. Millennials, they're trying to put us to dust. Okay. Secondly, the kids are in school and don't, they not really getting this experience that we got in school where we had to struggle. Parents was cutting us off mid semester. <laughs> you know, they were telling us to get jobs. You know, I, um, I actually did have the benefit of my dad still giving me money up until he cut me off. But you know, you had to pay for your own gas. You wasn't getting cars dropped off in the lot for you. You weren't getting cars just like that. Who was saving money when the credit card folks was on campus saying, here, you, could, you too can have a credit card and live the life of your dreams. The, the, you, we wasn't saving no money. Side hustles were the, the hairstyles that you were doing during the side hustles were the ones your friend was giving you on discount. Okay? But anyways, I was like, my house is furnished. Her place is not. It's crazy. And you got people walking in and out of different rooms with their guys. Whew. I re oh, my God. <laughs> four bedrooms, four beds. I know it's a lot. Uh, uh, was it? Dang, I bet you. I, it was it up there by you, the school? Um, it's K KSU. Okay, that's what I, I didn't want to say the name, but yeah, that's what I figured it was. So cool. Uh -huh. That's what I thought. Yes, yeah. yes. It, it's it's that cool. <laughs> I used and to I'm work like, out there. I used oh, to work really? in there. Uh, I was the retail manager. I ran the... Uh, the dining services out there before. So that's how I knew what you was talking about. I'm like, I know exactly how this place is set up, child. That's too much. Too much. <laughs> it's too, too much, much, not enough. I said, my God. But sweetheart, you know, and and good music is good music. That's all I'm going to say. The, kid, right. the, the new music nowadays, they're giving us four words in the song, and they're not singing anymore. <laughs> Anywho, speaking of <laughs> the metro Atlanta area, it's not Atlanta. What is Atlanta is what's happening to Young Thug and uh, his YSL crew. The latest, you guys, the latest in what's happening, it's reported that um, Jack Harlow's name was being thrown in there. Uh, so, so, pause before you go there, Rebecca. Let me tell you something mm -hmm. that I discovered last night as well, too. Um, mm -hmm. Because I saw you dropped it. and. Yeah. Oh, we we have the clip, right? Mm-hmm. We have a two two different clips. 
Okay, I'll let you finish first before I, uh, and I'm going to finish. Because it's the so reason why I say that. I'm going to let you finish. Yeah. Gonna I'm going to let, let you finish. Okay. But uh, Beyonce <laughs> had the best video of all time. Okay, you can go ahead. Thank you. Hey, Thank you for your services. <laughs> so his name was brought up um, uh, in this conversation during Fulton County District Attorneys, and his name being Jack Carlos. Uh, uh, during Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis's press conference, which was yesterday, and it was re regarding uh, what we did see and what we did report on yesterday, Young Thug's recent RICO indictment, uh, a reporter had asked the DA why Jack Harlow's name wasn't in the indictment. Uh, and so this was yesterday. Uh, and when he asked that, he shared to uh, his Twitter account, what other people shared to Twitter as well, uh, the video. And in the clip, the reporter is asking Miss Fannie Willis uh, why he wasn't mentioned. And here is, do we have her response? Look, because I don't know what we got. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, and here's her response. <laughs> um. <laughs> The indictment's got uh, Young Thug and uh, a bunch of other rappers. There was one name I was actually expecting to see there that I didn't, and that's Jack Harlow. Um, can you speak to that? What I'll tell you is that as large as this indictment is, the I told my team that let's not be sexy, now let's not overreach, let's be conservative in our approach, which is always the approach that I take. Um, and in taking that approach, 28 defendants were indicted, and they were indicted for the crimes that I believe were appropriate for this RICO indictment. Um, and so I won't speak to any. <laughs> so, it, like, said. again, it's. First of all, I, we'll get to what she said because it's very interesting. I didn't, I didn't know why, but uh, a lot of people were unsure why uh, the Kentucky, the Louisville, shout out to Louisville, Louisville, Louisville. Shout out my best friends out there. But shout out to the Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, that's not how she says it, though. But um, rapper, <laughs> Jack Harlow, uh, he, you know, the people were confused as to why he would have been um, allegedly involved. Um, the speculation was big, of course, on social media. And uh, but what is clear is that um, both the reporter and the district attorney didn't know <laughs> who Jack Harlow really was. So um, people were confused why his name was thrown around there. Um, but what we do know is Young Thug, Gunna, who I believe that they just um, did arrest re recently. Yeah, he turned himself in. Um, yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and, and 28 others who are part of uh, the, the YSL, which is Young Thug's group, um, were basically indicted and they're facing some serious charges. That's what we do yeah. know. So, um, what did you have to add to that, Mr. Williams? So, what I found out was the reason why Jack Carlo's name was, was asked by that reporter is because of a trending tweet that somebody posted and it went viral and I guess he saw that tweet he referenced that tweet and that's why he asked her about that so at this point there's been no confirmations that Jack Carlo was even involved um, because Young Slime Life, that's the name of the, the gang YSL, is, 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 is a gang that's here in Atlanta Atlanta based part of the national blood uh blood gang. Yeah. So Jack Harlow wouldn't even have anything <laughs> wouldn't even have any dealings. People with were it, asking honestly. why. People were definitely asking why um he would have yeah. anything to do to, to do with it. But um everybody was confused. The fact she don't even know who Jack Harlow was. That's why she had to put her glasses yeah. on. Jack Harlow. And she Rebecca She said we would not make it sexy. Let's not be sexy. We would not make it sexy. <laughs> It got crazy right there for me, y'all. Let me say, don't be too sexy. Wait, she, what? She said, <laughs> she said, I told my team, let's not be sexy. Let's not overreach. Let's be conservative in our approach. Miss <sighs> Willis. Miss Miss Willis. <laughs> but Rebecca, let, let's talk about this for a second. Because <laughs> one thing that I read in, in the, what they said, the way that they phrased it was is that his gang or YSL was committing, uh, they're committing conservative, to, conservative, to, uh, conservatively 75% <laughs> to 80% of all violent crime in our community. They had a you moment right there, but the way that it was phrased when it came out yesterday was just like, it was, 
this gang all along by themselves. When I, I the way they phrase it again earlier when I later on when I saw it is that gang violence in general is comprising seventy five to eighty percent. What I'm thinking is happening is these are two big names that they have and they want to just go after them. Now, granted, I do appreciate them going after the gang violence because it's been a lot going on, but I I think it's going to have a lot of other implications with a lot of other people as their rival gang is YFN. YFN and Lucci, they're okay. been talking about them being responsible for him being shot. So it's like this rival gang thing between both of the gangs. I'm like, y'all make too much money to be acting like this. Yes. No, for sure. I think, honestly, what we're seeing right now is a lot of mess unraveling. It sucks yeah. that people who have money, like we said yesterday, just continuously go to the streets. And, and, and like you, when you made it out the streets, I know, we said this yesterday. And like I said, I'm closely connected to somebody who made it out the streets and went back to the streets, you know. Um, and I don't understand. I, it's not for me to understand, but sometimes the streets come to you and still look at you as that street God. And you feel like you still need that street cred and you got to be the street savior and, you know, and lead the people to more street mess because it's almost as if you can't put everybody on in the way that you would want to. So you got to keep that street, you know, that street title. That's what they're putting the pressure on you for. But you created this group, this gang. Um, and I, to me, gangs don't always have to be violent. They don't always have to right. um, uh, um, go out and kill or be a part of things that are negative. It's, you guys can flip it, the meaning, like take it back, do what you reclaim y'all time. You made it out. The whole point of you becoming a rapper was to make money. You are a millionaire. You got money. You can do whatever you want. You are. And he does contribute to his community. But mm -hmm. here is what 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 you have contributed to as well during your stardom, during your fame, while you're OK and you're comfortable. You contributed. You contributed to things in the streets and now it's come back on you and and and, and it's terrible in this way gunna who is what 22 years old yeah has to step in to um this and he's just getting his actual fame in his adulthood you know just beginning his moments just begin his album just dropped not too long ago you know he's he's coming into himself and now he's a part of this i know in many songs we've heard even um, um the da uh here in georgia actually stated Ooh. that the lyrics the lyrics to music and social media have been in a great tool and helping indict people, especially in these recent RICO charges. So for, and, and, and um, to be clear, this is not a federal uh, um, uh, RICO charge. This is the state itself of Georgia. So it's more personal. It's right here. It's local. They can get to it. They've been watching. People been talking. We know that all of this may be a reason why Young Thug has gotten got, but what they say all the time is that a lot of things that you did or may have done will always catch up with you. I don't want to see Young Thug go away. I love that man. Right. My sister was here right. trying to say, Melinda, Melinda, my sister, she was here talking about, he ain't do that. He ain't really. Melinda, now. <laughs> this. They trying to take him down. I said, but sis, I know we love him. We don't know that man. That is not our close counterpart that's going to, like, it, I know we're getting flashbacks, and we want to say that person didn't do it. <laughs> we got to be, we love him. That doesn't mean that we love him any less. We don't want to see him go away. We want right. to see him come out and get another opportunity, a chance, something. But if you did that, somebody's family is mourning somebody. Somebody got hurt in the midst of all of this. He has a son that, as he's in there, doesn't have a mom or dad at this particular moment because the mother of his son was killed not too long ago, was shot not too long ago. So did he think about that before going in there? Were these things on his mind? No, because street life, sometimes that fast money takes over. I hope the best to them, though. I really, really do. I don't yeah. know. I really do. Um, and, and, and as for um, as for Gunna, I really hope that he gets um, – I hope that he – I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I don't know. But well, this is actually just, happening in Atlanta. It's unraveling. It's unbelievable that Rico is because we right. all just been looking at Rico just yesterday anyway. So <laughs> right. So I know what Rico Google. meant. <laughs> Every time Rico comes up, that's when I have to go and what does that mean again? And I start see, finding out new things. 
It's like, damn. Meek Mill cool. made a song about it, and you know, and I'm thinking to myself, well, Rico is a person. Okay, cool. Yeah, so who is Rico? Rico. So uh, yesterday I discovered, I'm like, oh no, Rico is a whole goddamn acronym. Okay, cool. <laughs> First time I understood what Rico was was from Sons of Anarchy. Because gang relations and and all and all that mischief. So yeah. don't know what that is. Um, you ain't never heard of Sons of Anarchy. I I, okay, thank you, Jay. I was just making sure. <laughs> I was like, somebody gotta, somebody gotta. Um, I'm trying to find a really a really good tweet that broke it down. Um, dang, it was so good. Look, dang, it was so oh, good. Actually, Rebecca, I might have you. It's gone. She 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 done muted it. Sorry y'all for um that look that that pause for the listening audience. Pause, I apologize right. for that for that pregnant pause. <laughs> uh, there, there there is the <laughs> there is other news. Again, um, we want those people to um, those people. I want whatever's to happen not to the, for them to be made an example. People tried to make that Jack Hollow situation a thing for for I believe they want to be like why they didn't get the white man. Yeah, who was part of the group? Don't throw that man's name in there. Y'all really they crazy just for that. Mad. They just mad because Jack dropped a hot ass CD last week, and then he was at the Kentucky Derby with Drake. Him and Drake, you know what? Never mind. And then he was at the Kentucky uh, Kentucky mm-hmm. Derby with Drake. They just jealous. They just mad. They trying to just pull the man down. That's all it is. He was with another white man hanging Kentucky. together. <laughs> yeah, a whole nother white man hanging together having a good old time. Anyways, we are moving forward from the Kentucky Derby because I wish I was there. Um, you know, as I, I, I told you guys, it is my birthday month. My birthday is just, what's today? The 11th. My birthday is four days away. Four. Four days away. I just got four days away from my birthday. <laughs> but it's also Child, Haitian History no. Month. It's also Haitian History Month. And during Haitian History Month, during Black Haitian History Month, <laughs> That's an oxymoron. But during Haitian History Month, they changed out the press secretary um, for Joe Biden, and they made it, you know, a, a, a black woman, a black Haitian woman, which was Karine Jean Pierre. Karine Jean Pierre. If you guys want to know the pronunciation, I know a lot of people are Karen Jean Pierre. Karine Jean Pierre. <laughs> So they done made her the press secretary and me and you were talking about it yesterday. Goodbye, yeah. Jen Saki. Go get your rest, girl. Go be on the beach. Legs out. Get a tan. Relax. Think about your get life for tan. this past year. Go enjoy get yourself. Um, and, and, and remember, we were talking about, uh, um, you know, her being promoted, Colleen Jean-Pierre being promoted to um, from deputy press secretary to now the press secretary uh, herself, the press secretary. And we and I was saying, I want to see somebody go against the grain. I want to see somebody do a little shake up and talk back. I want to see somebody actually stand there and say what is happening instead of being just a talking head for the president, even though I know that that's, that is the position, but being a black woman in that position, I think it'll be harder to stand in front of people and just be a talking head while things are happening yeah. for, you know, to communities that look like you. So yesterday uh, she was in an interview, well, not an interview, she was doing a press conference and uh, she let people know that Fox News was racist. <laughs> Fox News was racist and that was pretty good to hear because uh, she was asked a question I believe about Fox News and she called them racist I think it was great a lot of people were upset um, on, on the people's you know Twitter's you know people gonna run their mind think pieces are gonna f- come out but she, knowing that we have somebody to actually speak against racism five minutes into having her position that's what I'm talking about baby come in and, and disturb yeah. the peace um, so mm-hmm. she d- uh, during the TV uh, um I'm sorry. I'm getting um, emails from my job as well. Um, oh, it's a lot happening right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, she called. She called. Me um, too, David. <laughs> I apologize. So she called them racist. Um, and and um, I think that while we are we're looking this interview that she did though, it didn't happen just yesterday, but it happened while she was standing near Jin Saki. Um, she called them racist. I think this is what we're going to see more of while we have her standing at the pulpit. I think that we want to see more of this standing at the pulpit. They done made it go, go go viral to say that she's not fit for the position. She hasn't been there five minutes. Right. 
he hasn't been there five minutes and they're pulling pulling up clips that do matter um but it shows you that we have someone who isn't afraid to press uh, uh buttons and to actually call people out for what they are uh we don't need people to say i don't believe america is racist and then go missing Hmm. We don't need people in power to be doing that because we know there's somebody in power who was doing that on today. We haven't heard from her since. <laughs> we did it, Joe. We haven't heard from her since. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, <laughs> but shout out to her, Colleen. I really, really want her to win. I really look forward to what she can do. I don't want to be disappointed. I know a lot of times we do put our eggs in one basket, and I'm willing to do that for this woman. Yeah. She Haitian, so I'm I'm will, I'm willing to do that for her. I I am like my, my mom says I am, mom. There's am. no why there. I am. <laughs> that's, I am. That's how I respond to when everybody says, "Are you going to say this?" I am. I put the I and I'll do a little yam emoji. I am. <laughs> yes, I'm do. No, mom. Yes, I did. Yes, I'm do. No, mama. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to mama um but yes uh you know shout out to her it's a lot um also that we um that we didn't cover yesterday i wanted to get to this particular uh tiktok from yesterday that we need to discuss um it is a before we get out of the 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 main show and go into our um and go into our after party there is a tiktok star that tried to say there was true oppression to white women. This went viral over the weekend, or um, during the weekend, and this particular TikTok star, and I couldn't tell you what she was really complaining about, but when I listened to it, I couldn't believe it. And before us black people step up, step up to the forefront to read her her rights for saying that black, people, black women aren't oppressed like white women are, and y'all, when y'all hear the reasoning, it's gonna make you wanna just, I don't even know. But before we could step up to the plate and read her, because you know we we it, we don't need anybody to do that for us, but we all also encourage white colleagues to get their people in order. Y'all speak that language so y'all can get the people in order. So <coughs> one guy, definitely <coughs> one white man, took the uh, took the opportunity and read her her rights for us. Let's take a look at this particular TikToker. The black and brown community has more resources in place because you guys have been fighting for a lot longer than we have. Because of everything you've been through, you do have more experience. You have more safety nets. You have more fire extinguishers. Is there a reason that you're gatekeeping them? Wow. And this video is still up. How embarrassing. How sad. Baby, maybe instead of policing black women and how they gatekeep their advocacy, you address the problem of how white women gatekeep their privilege. In this video alone, you spell out how white women have sat on the sidelines and watched as black women, native indigenous women, and other women of color have had to fight for their rights alone. With you not coming to their aid, but now you want them to come to your aid when you need help? Wow. Seems like a parasitic relationship to me. Maybe you would have had some of those resources you're talking about if you actually joined other communities and helping ensure that their rights aren't taken away. But you have been perfectly fine to sit on the sidelines and watch. And now you want to sit on the sidelines and watch as black women and other women of color fight for your rights so that you can reap the benefits. I wonder where I've heard that story before. White feminists, if you want black women and other women of color to join you in your fight maybe get the george floyd police reform bill passed before we start addressing the roe versus wade maybe address the water sovereignty issues that native tribes have had maybe help other communities first and then we can help join you because you, the history that you have is sitting on the sidelines and watching as other people's rights are being taken away got it let's do better He said all of that. He said all of that. Proud. He said all of that. Proud. He said all of that. Proud. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. He said She started that. off and said, is there a reason why you're gatekeeping our fire extinguishers? <laughs> Y'all. Bitch, bitch, bitch wet. There's so much going on in, in our world. Black women are at the bottom of every list. And you said, 
that we hey mama y'all can't hear Dwayne's baby is turning talk she thought every time I talk she tell you turn talk to me I feel like um right. the other day she was cussing me out because I was talking about Roe versus Wade and have that baby yes. don't fought all the all the um, birth control <laughs> options <laughs> Rebecca, me out. Rebecca, you're in the middle of a rant. Hey, mama. <laughs> I, I know, because I heard. I'm sorry, I heard. I heard. I, so there was something sweeter than that white woman's voice that I heard earlier, and Hello, that was like, right. maybe. <laughs> Anywho, back to the back to this. Um, there are so many different issues that black women are facing right now. And a white woman want to come up here and say, "Is there a reason why you're gatekeeping our fire extinguishers?" G- nothing to say about oh, i really this. thought we lost her <laughs> i saw the, i saw the earring dangling so i know we were good i <laughs> am shocked can we play that beginning of this 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 um this tiktok again can we play the beginning of it yeah. one more time yeah. i'm not crazy the black and brown community has more resources in place because you guys have been fighting for a lot longer than we have because of everything you've been through, you do have more experience. You have more safety nets. You have more fire extinguishers. Is there a reason that you're gatekeeping them? Wow. And this video is <laughs> still up. How- this lady said that, y'all, we've been fighting for longer than they have. You goddamn right, we're more bitch. <laughs> she said that's why we're more experienced. Because we've been fighting. We're still fighting. And we're still. the reason why we were fighting in the first place was because y'all folks brought us over here. We didn't want to be here. And we had to fight for our freedoms till this day we're still fighting for. Not because we wanted to be fighting. It's because of people who look like you, your ancestors, Ooh. sis. Ooh. Till this day. You're talking about fire extinguishers. You're talking about um, um, resources. The resources that not only he named, but we don't get medical. When we go to the doctors, especially as black women, when we step up in in, in, in any hospital, they look at us as if, first of all, she should be strong enough to endure whatever pain that she's feeling. So let's get the next patient and have her on hold. Although she is about to have that baby in two seconds, she could she could take the pain. Or her um, her endometriosis is acting up right now. We'll just throw her on some drugs, see if she could pay for it. If not, we'll definitely tax her a million times more, um, and we'll start doing some extra work while we got her under under. You know, we we can't even afford to go. We have to save ourselves in so many different ways, right? Mm. Not only that, housing for us is ridiculous. Getting money for us, it's, it's, we can't even go to the bank, no matter how great our credit is, and really sit there and ask them for the money and get it just like that. We got to jump through loopholes just to get housing, just to get housing. Yes, there is a difference. We are not gatekeeping anything. We're still struggling. Not only are we still struggling here, we are fighting. We're still fighting. We're sitting here while your people get to say me too, and then get to go and have their cases gone to trial, and they get to be heard, while the black woman who said me too alone long time ago she's looked at as if that's not even her damn that wasn't something that she came up with but when a white woman says it it's it's the whole world can 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 follow along with that black men are getting shot down every damn single day every single day every single day do you have to worry about white people going out and possibly getting shot is that something that you worry about first thing in the morning? First thing in the morning when we see police officers, if, we, if we're walking out or we're, we're, we're um, walking our children to school, we have, we have to, especially if they're black boys, we're having to tell them how to act and what to do to a, 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 a five-year-old that we, we're afraid to let them walk to school by themselves. We get afraid for our family members that we don't live next to when they get up and go to work, telling them don't take particular routes, Right? When, co- when the pandemic happened, where were you? What resources were you getting? Weren't you at the front of the line? They had to create, they had to create stations and, and places where they knew nobody would go except for the black people. And white folks were driving out to them areas and cutting in front of the line. You guys, stop it. Stop it. And that's only less than 1% of our issues. We got so many issues. And you're saying that we're gatekeeping resources. We're fighting to get them. While y'all saying that all we do is stay on welfare and, and all we do is look for food stamps because it benefits us. Because we can't afford to be getting food no matter. We can't afford to get food because the way that we have, the amount of money that we have to pay for housing, for living, 
to survive in America. Don't worry about my food stamps, darling. <laughs> and studies show that white people are the ones who are mostly on them things. Because it's still hard for us to get access to them. I'm tired. I'm tired. Dwayne, get it off me because I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. That was Rebecca's <sighs> rant for the day, and it was a well said rant. Make sure we clip that and get that posted <laughs> because, my God, today, you said a lot. I am tired. I am tired of these people just getting on TikTok saying ridiculous stuff. And we and we and we are gonna keep moving mm. on from it. We're gonna allow you guys to talk amongst each other, white folks. Go get go get y'all people because they out here talking crazy. I'm glad mm -hmm. we didn't have to read her for Phil because we're doing it every day. We're doing it every day. And, and and it's like once we try to sit back and say, you know what, I'm just gonna chill in my black self. Somebody says something like that. How can you get to chill in your black self? It's not fair. It's not fair. Why do you get to close your eyes as a black woman? You don't get to do that. You don't get to rest. Girl. This goes all back to that privilege. They think that, first of all, they still think that we back in the olden days. I say the olden days where y'all think y'all can talk this any kind of way and that we don't deserve rights like y'all have. We are deserving of any and everything that y'all have and even more deserving because of the shit that y'all put us through for not only centuries, but I mean just let's be honest from the beginning of time. So mm -hmm. don't come at us talking about where's my safety net? Where's my fire extinguishers? Bitch look in your closet. <laughs> Bitch look in the mirror. Bitch look in a lot of places. There's a lot of places you can look. Don't get me started, Rebecca. See, you know what? I look. I digress. Because I just started, biggest. Rebecca just started something. So Rebecca just started something. Let me stop. <laughs> Listen, I'm calling no, the white lady up being like three times on this TV, y'all. So already. Listen. Listen. Listen, no, but honestly, um, we're coming, we're, we came to the end of the show, so don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? It's at the end of the show, charging to the game. We upset. We mad. Mm. I'm upset. Mm. No, um, and, and so we're at the end of the show. Thank you guys for hanging with us. Ben was here. You, you missed him. You, you, he, he was fast okay he does exist he is still here you will see him on next tuesday uh again it is my birthday weekend you will not see me on friday but you'll see me tomorrow i'll be hanging with you guys tomorrow and for everyone who's asking how to bless me on my birthday becca's voice on cash app also head over to the patreon party if you are not a patreon now please show up at www.patreon.com forward slash like it or not support come on through and let's go and have a party come party with me I'm